great gift from God to our generation. A loud hand clap and ovation, please, for Bishop Dag Haywood Mills. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the great help of your spirit today, leading us, guiding us, helping us. We are grateful. Thank you for your mighty power. Building your church, Lord, in a special way. Thank you that you, you love your church and you love your servants, your pastors, many of whom are here today. And thank you that you have something for every single one of us that we may walk in you, grow in you, that our ministries will go from victory to victory, from glory to glory. Thank you for everyone who is here today by your mighty power. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Give it. Hallelujah. Now, today I want to share with you about um, something that is going to build your church. This is a ministry conference. Amen. Amen. So I want to share with you about something that helps you to build the church. And that is loyalty and faithfulness. Amen. Now, why is loyalty um, and faithfulness important? If you are building a building, let's say we started to build this structure, right? I don't know if you can see the trusses. These are eye sections. I don't know what they are called, but they are. Supposing we put one, two, three, four, five, and then when we come tomorrow, somebody has removed two of them. That then we come and we build another, put another five there, then the next day, somebody has taken away three. All right? So you find out that as you build, you are unable to achieve very much because when you add a hundred, somebody takes away sixty. When you add another hundred, so actually you are not adding a hundred. You are adding much less than a hundred. And this is what happens in the ministry. When we build up, we end up losing many of the things and the people that we are building. All right? So we need to develop faithfulness. Faithfulness. So faithfulness is... Um, it means uh, steadfast, steady, unchanging, unswerving, unwavering. When I see people working with Pastor Jonathan here, uh, and I see you in your church, and you have people, the main thing that I feel like saying to them is, be faithful. Be faithful. Let's find you here after five years. Let's find you around... In 10 years. You see, you, you can hardly find people, the same people after five years. How many have tried building your church and then after a year, many of the people left? Isn't it? It happens only in Africa. Does it happen here? Then say amen at least. Yeah. All right. I was asking the people who were singing whether I would find them here next year. The people on the music. In fact, the last time I came, there was somebody else singing. The first time I came, there was some other person singing. But I don't think it's the same person. Yeah. So, you know, that's why it's a question. Are you going to be around uh, in 10 years, in 5 years? And every mega church has people that stay for the long distance. How many are from Revival? Uh, what's this church called? Revival today. How many are from here? Raise your hand. 
Oh, very good. I'm glad you are here so that I can preach to you. <laughs> I want to preach to you to be faithful. Amen. I want to preach to you to be faithful. That means to, to not change. Faithful and loyal means to not change. No change. Amen. And uh, when you don't change, you remain the same. All right? Now, God is going to bless you mightily when you don't change. Hallelujah. Right. Can we turn to Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 28? And if you don't mind, the ERV version or amplify the ERV if you have. Yeah. Notice, a king who is loyal and true will keep his power. And loyalty will keep his kingdom strong. Yeah. A king who is loyal will keep his power. Right? You need to be loyal as a king. The pastor has to be loyal. That means that he's not going anywhere. He's going to be around. He's going to be there in five years. He's going to be there in ten years. He's going to be there in twenty years. He says, a king who is loyal and true, right, will keep his power. So many pastors in America have lost their power. They've lost their congregations. They've lost the people that they had. They've lost the power that they had. They've lost the money. They've lost the influence. They've lost many, much of that is gone. Because the word loyal is the word faithful. And it's the word constant. To be constant. All right? It means to be not to change, to not change. You know, and many pastors are not loyal and faithful to God. We have changed the message that Jesus gave us. We are not faithful to the message of God. All right? But and so that's why the Bible says, a king who is loyal and true will keep his power. Are you, are you reading with me? Yes. Are you reading with me? A, a king who is loyal and true will keep his power. Look at... Uh, Look at, uh, what's his name, Billy Graham ministry. How much money did you say they, they, they pulled in? 630 million. 630 million last year. Yes. Last year. That's the income of the Billy Graham ministry. Now, Billy Graham didn't veer off into a lot of the jargon that we have today. He didn't veer off into any of these new messages. We have so many new messages about corridors of power <laughs> and all kinds of, I don't know what kind of messages we have today. Yeah. And all kinds of words. I don't know whether you got them from Encyclopedia Britannica or what. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A king who is loyal and true Loyal and true. So you ask yourself, but you are not a king, but you are a leader. You are a pastor. You are a minister. You are in charge of your church. You are in, you've been assigned to preach the gospel and to preach the word. And it says that a king who is loyal and true will keep his power. 
And most pastors have lost their power. They've lost their influence. Look at Billy Graham. I mean, you just ask yourself, what did he preach? What did he preach? What, what, what was his message? I have all the messages, and I'm not happy with the Billy Graham ministry because I want them to bring out all the messages so that we can have them. I don't know who they are keeping them for. <laughs> because that's how I learned evangelism, by transcribing Billy Graham's preaching. Yes, that's how I learned how to be an evangelist. I learned by writing out the points as Billy Graham preached. One, number one, number two, number three, number four. I wrote them out. I have all his videos. That's why I keep on as I met them. I said, where are you keeping the what? Oh, who is it for? Bring it out so that we can be blessed. Yes. And he preached Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, salvation. I remember listening to one lady who got saved. She was with her husband who was a crazy guy. And she got saved. And she said she was driving in a car. And she had Billy Graham on the radio. And the message was entitled, God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. She said she, she was listening to that on the radio. And she gave her life to Jesus. This is the message. Yes. Of Jesus. So, a king who is loyal and true. And many of the so-called prosperity ministers and preaching have not given this level of prosperity. $630 million in a year divided by 24, divided by 12. Are you art students or science students? Use your iPad or and do the calculation. 630 divided by 12. 52 million a month. Um, now, some years after he's left, he's died. He himself is not alive to use the money. He's in the grave. But he has maintained. Oh, yes. Even if it's financial, if you want to use financial money as the measure, he has maintained a certain level, even in his death. Yeah, which is remarkable. And you can't say that for many of us. Yes, many of us, we just have big cars. We just have the best cars, but no money. The church, the ministry, the work is nothing. We are presiding over hearts and dust. Yes. All right? So this is a very interesting verse. A king who is loyal and true will keep his power. So I want to encourage everybody here. Listen, the power of what you have is the seed. Luke 8.1, he says, the seed is the word. This is all we have, the word. None of us will ever be greater than the word we are speaking. Yes. None of us will be greater. So we are word handless. It is the word that has power. So we should trust the word. And just deliver these words. Luke 8, 11, isn't it? Yes. It, it, is, it is the word. That's what we have. Yes. Change to the, change to King James. Change it, please. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. This is what you are. One time I had a vision. In the vision, I was part of the vision. And I saw myself mad, walking towards an army. The army was a frightening army. They, were, they had metal armor. They were heavily armed. And I was walking out on a field like this. And as I was going, people were shouting, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you. Be careful. They're going to kill you. What are you doing? You are crazy. But I kept walking towards the army. And I was watching myself in the, in the movie. When I got to the people, I just put my hand in my pocket. And I picked out from my pocket seeds. And I th just threw the seeds on the 
people. And they all just fell down. I was so shocked. So I took some more seats and I just kept sprinkling on the army. And they all just went down. They all went down like dominoes. And the Lord was telling me, listen, the message you are preaching is powerful. The word you are preaching is powerful. Keep preaching. Keep planting. Keep sowing the seed. Yes. Keep sowing the seed. Don't be afraid of the Bible. Don't be afraid of the word of God. Don't think that there is something more powerful or more fantastic than what we have in the Bible and what we have in the Word of God. It is very powerful. Amen. Yes. Yes. And when I was studying about Billy Graham, when I was starting the evangelistic ministry, I learned something. He, he also came to that conclusion that the Word of God is powerful. So if it is powerful, if he even reads it to the people, because it's the word of God, if he reads it to the people, the people will be blessed or healed or whatever it is. Yes. So you will find Billy Graham reading out the scriptures to the people. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it had a powerful effect even up until today. So there is no need to get anything new. What we have, like the word of God, is, 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 is everything. He said, now the parable is this. Luke 8, 11. The parable, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. That's what we have. So let us be faithful to the seed. Let us be faithful to the seed. Yes. Let's not deviate from the message that God has given to us. What's the message? God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. That's the message. You can't improve on it. Yes. And God will give you enough money to keep preaching it till the end of your life. Can I have an amen? Amen. What a great blessing. Now, the next thing is Proverbs 20, 28. Let's look at it again in the ERV version. Amen. Loyalty will keep his kingdom strong. Loyalty will keep his kingdom strong. Amen. Amen. Now, faithfulness will make your ministry strong. Being constant and the same. So if you can get people to be constant... That is, you can get them to be faithful and serve, all right? Then you can build a strong kingdom and a strong ministry. Amen. Now, it's very important if you can do that because naturally, human beings are not faithful. Yes? Naturally, human beings are not faithful. That's the nature of man. The nature of man is to be not faithful. Amen. Naturally, Americans are independent. Independence started from America. The first group that fought for independence from Britain were Americans long before anybody thought of it. So this is where independence is born. So it, is, it looks like independence is a very great thing. It's a culture. And that culture that I don't need you and you don't need me. Right? And that I'll do my own thing, you do your own thing. Okay, 
and I'll, I'll just serve you for a while. I was asking the pastor, said, how, long, how long are you going to be here? Yeah. You know, Jesus said, is the person on the computer, I hope you can find scripture for me. Bible says in Revelation, be thou faithful unto death. Amen. Have you seen that scripture? Be thou faithful. I have a whole book on that. Be thou faithful unto death. Faithfulness is till, for your whole life. Yeah. Faithfulness is for your whole life. It says, for none, be thou none afraid of those things you shall suffer. All right. But be thou, underline it please, be thou faithful unto death. Loyalty or faithfulness or constantness. You see, he, he gives us the time where you stop being faithful. When you die. Yeah, he, te he tells us when it ends. It ends at death. Be thou faithful. Have this characteristic out the way until you die. So you have all these people say, oh, I'll, 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 I'm going to be faithful. You know, well, till, when the Lord, if the Lord speaks to me, of course, if the Lord tells me, so I'm going to stay here till the Holy Spirit speaks to me to leave. Wow. wow. Now, it's this nice and spiritual sounding. I'm going to be part of revival till when the Lord tells me, you know, to leave and so on. Now, when you get married, okay, when you get married, I suggest, I suggest that you use that same phrase. You know, I'm going to be faithful till the Holy Spirit tells me anything else. If he tells me something else, I think I'll be, I'll be able to flow. Yeah. 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 Try that on your marriage and see. Hmm. You see, you have these spiritual sounding answers from spiritual sounding people and so when the lord tells me you know I'm, I'm i'm glad i'm part of pastor jonathan's ministry and i'm here unless the holy spirit i mean we are sensitive to the spirit and if the spirit says you try to move on if the cloud moves on i'll move with the cloud wow <laughs> That is why many of you have not been able to build anything. Yeah, because you see, you can't build much with independent people who separate themselves. The Bible says, these are they which separate themselves having not the spirit. They, don't, they rather don't have the spirit. Instead of they having the spirit, they rather don't have the spirit. Put that scripture on Jude, is it verse 20 or whatever. Yeah. That's why you see some of you, you are trying to build a church. You've lost your main pillars. The main pillars of your ministry, they are, they are gone. There was this worship leader and then he took off. When he led a few times, the worship was nice and beautiful. He felt the spirit was moving. Then he suddenly felt that, you know, God was with him. The spirit said to him, my son, my son, my son, my son. My son, my son, you must move on. I see a new door, a new chapter, a new beginning. <laughs> Do you have such things in America? I think I should go to Tanzania and preach there. Because these are not practical. They don't happen in America. <laughs> oh, yes. So Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. Notice Proverbs 20 and verse 6, King James. Notice Proverbs 20 and verse 6. It says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find a faithful person, who can find a long-standing person who doesn't change, who doesn't change, who doesn't change, who said I love you and still I love you, who said I'm with you and still I'm with you, who said I'll follow you and I'm still following you, who said I will assist you and he's still assisting, who said I'd love to lead worship in your church and he's still doing that. Who can find somebody like that? And so instead of encouraging people to be independent when God hasn't designed you to be independent, 
We must encourage people to be faithful. Remember, when Jesus comes, he's going to reward us for two things. Remember, number one, well done, good. Well done, good. And then well done, faithful. So well done, you were good. And number two, you were constant. You didn't change. Because it's so easy to change. It's so easy to change. When time goes by, put on my scripture, please. Well done, good and faithful. Oh, yes. No, brother, be active. Find the scriptures. All right, for me. Who is the one doing that? Yeah. Well done, good and faithful servant. I'd like to see that scripture. Matthew something over there. 25. Yeah. A faithful man. Remember, you are going to be rewarded by Jesus. Not for just being a good preacher. Or a good singer. Or a good worship leader. Or a good financier. But a good and faithful. Like you were reliable. Reliable. That's the word, the word he said, Lord, well done, good end. Good end, faithful. Underline it, please. Good end, faithful. Servant. Thou has been faithful or thou has been constant. Like you didn't change. Thou has been constant. So we need to teach people and we need to teach and believe that it is a good thing. To be faithful, to be reliable, and to be constant. It's a good thing. It's something to aspire to. It's like giving. You know, once you see it as a good thing, you will aspire. So I want to get to the point where I can give a car. I want to get to the point I can give a thousand. I want to get to the point I can give ten thousand. That it's a good thing to give. And it's in the same way, it's a good thing to be faithful, to be constant. But you see, what we have is that it's a good thing for the spirit to lead you to leave your position. Yeah. When the spirit comes. And most of those people who keep leaving places from here to here, they are just withered trees. Because when you are uprooted, from where God has planted you. Huh? You are finished. You are finished. Now many people are finished from the day that they are uprooted and transplanted. That is the end of their lives and their ministry. It's true. How many trees can survive being transplanted? How many trees can, can survive? Even when you transplant organs in the body. It's not easy to be accepted. It's not easy to be accepted. If you are a kidney, you are taken from somebody, put in another person as a kidney, the whole body reacts. You say, who is this in this body? Where is this kidney from? We are, and they, they send messages to the whole body. We are sensing the presence of a foreign agent. And the immune system rises up. To locate this new addition and say, no, 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 no. We know you were somewhere in another body, but here you are not working well. We don't want your presence here. Then they start to attack. That is why people who've had transplants have to have so much medicine to lower their immune system. Because the immunity of the immunity of the body rises up to reject it. It's not easy to be transplanted. So I want to just transplant my heart. I, I want to transplant my liver. Somebody's got to be crazy. We don't just transplant things. It's not easy to be transplanted. Even the organs in the body, it's not easy to transplant them. You know, one time I met somebody and the person was having some, some um, problem. medical. So I told the person, look, I'm going to give you vitamin C. I want you to take vitamin C. The person started to take vitamin C. The, because vitamin C really raises your immunity. And, the, and then the person had to suddenly stop because he, he, the, this person had a kidney transplant. 
And as the immunity of the body was getting stronger, it was fighting the, the new kidney. Yeah. I mean, bodies don't like new members. I mean, from other places. So if you belong in Revival Outreach and you go to uh, international uh, uh, whatever, uh, 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 international what? Global church, yes. You know? Hey, they'll say, look, man, we don't want you here. <laughs> go back to where you, be, you belong. <laughs> where God planted you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You belong somewhere. God plants you somewhere. Not everywhere. Somewhere. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 13 and verse 14. Look at it. It says, Deuteronomy 12, 13. It says, take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place where thou seest. Not everywhere. You don't belong everywhere. It's not everywhere you give offerings. It's not everywhere you worship. It's not everywhere you sit. But look at verse 14. But in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings. And there thou shalt do all that I command thee. Yes. There is a place. Let's look at it again. Verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Notice. It says, take heed. Take heed. You, everybody must be careful. You know, whatever I have belonged to since I became a Christian, I still belong to. The relationships that I have had, I consider them as divine relationships. I've never broken any relationship. All the people that I've ever honored, I honor up till today. Yeah, I, I've never changed. I, I saw this is a person that's important in my life up till today. I, I, I don't have a person. I don't talk to this person anymore. I, I mean, we, 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 are, we are quarreling about... No, no, no. You have pastors who don't talk to this. I don't talk to that. I no more speak to this person. You can't even come around. You can't even come around because of the way you left and how you behaved. And your attitude and everything you said about us. Do you have such people in America? Hmm. <laughs> I was preaching about this in Kenya. And I told them, well, I'm going to Tanzania because they didn't seem to appreciate what I was saying. <laughs> and they told me that that's the headquarters of what I'm saying. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 12. It says, take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place. Somebody watching me online. Not everywhere. It's not everywhere. It's not everywhere that God has called you to. It's not everywhere you can worship. Not everybody you can go to. It's where God plants you and God, where God puts you. That's where you should be. But in the place, look at verse 14, that the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes. There thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings. And there thou shalt do all that I command thee to do. So, faithfulness. Those of you who God has touched, you know, and uh, allow, me to talk, uh, allow me to mention Pastor John, because this is where I am, please. You are here. You are part of this ministry. You know, be planted. This type of I'm here for five years. You are here for five years. Then leave now. We want people that are faithful unto death. Look at it. Put my scripture back. Revelations. No, no, no. Revelations. 210, 210, 210. Beautiful. He's doing well. Is it this man right here? Oh, he's in the back. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought it was this guy. Sorry for accusing you. <laughs> Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. 
The devil shall cast you into prison. And you shall be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful for five years. And I will give thee a crown of life. Be thou faithful for five years. Yeah, yeah. Be thou faithful to the end of your contract. No, no, no. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful. I must be at your funeral or you be at my funeral. That's the only way. That's the way to say goodbye. That's the way to say goodbye. Yes. We're going all the way to the end. Yes. And you see, naturally, we are not like that. Because Satan has planted the seed of the serpent. What is the seed? What is the seed? You know, there's something called the seed of the serpent. What is the seed of the serpent? Luke 8, 11, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. A seed is a word spoken to you. Now, since Satan spoke to Adam and Eve, or to Eve, and therefore to all of us, there is a seed planted in the human race. And what was the seed? What is that seed? What is that seed? The seed of the serpent. The seed of Satan. Number one, Offering you independence from God. He said you will be a God yourself. Why would you need a God when you are a God? You're you're going to be big. So many pastors of little, little groups. Wilderness churches, I call them. Church that cannot grow. They were all offered that seed. It is, and he offered them, he said, you shall be like something you will never have. That's another thing. Something you will never have. Yeah. Pastors are offered things you will never become. That's how come you got onto that journey. You belong by the side of God's servant to help. We need people that are going to be faithful here. Not, not, not for salary. And let me tell you something. If any relationship that is based on money is a bad relationship, I can tell you. Can you imagine you are only here because of money? You're only here because you are being paid. You're only here because they offered you something more than they offered you in the other church. Somebody's got to be Wazimu. In Kenya, Wazimu means you're mad. <laughs> Yeah. So that, that offer, you're going to be great. And the devil comes into people's hearts. You're going to be a man of God. You're going to be evangelist. You're going to be your own man. You'll also receive a private jet. Hey! Somebody's got to be Wazimu. <laughs> That's not how it works out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Satan spoke to Eve and offered her something she would never have. To jump, jump from where you are. Trust me. Come. And Eve listened. Now, she did that by discrediting he, discrediting the words of God. Please, Joey, can you give me the books, the loyalty books? He said, has God said, has God said, let's question this message. So the first temptation is to question. There are three things. Question the word. Yes. Question the message. Then after that, question the character of the person who is speaking. God knows that when you, when you, when you eat this tree, this fruit. You are going to be, so God is trying to keep you down. So if you stay as a part of this church, you will stay down. And God knows, God knows, God knows that you're going to be so great, but I have come to liberate you. I've come to, I'm your liberator. I've come to set you free. You're going to be greater. 
So, when Satan launches an attack against pastors, first of all, is the seed, the serpent has these three keys. Discredit the messages. Or question at least. Then number two, question the character. I learned this from Derek Prince. Oh yes, I learned all this from Derek Prince. Question the character of the person who is speaking. God knows this, God knows this, God knows. You know he wants this, he wants that, he's like this, he's like that. And then number three, to offer you something you will never have. Yeah. Pastor Jonathan, this is it's a three-way trick all the time. It happens. Or anybody who is around working, this is the seed of the serpent. To become independent. To, to separate yourself. If all the people who had ever come to revival today were still coming, we would not fit here. Yeah. So that is why, and you see, I want you to know that this is the natural seed in every human being. So if you don't teach against it, everybody's going to be like that. Everybody, everybody's going to come. Oh, the Lord has sent to me this. The Lord says this. The Lord says this. The Lord says that. I say, wow. I remember one time I was, I was, I visited um, when I first got connected to Yongi Cho. Ah, they were not, when I, when I invited him to Ghana, they were not interested. They said, ah, oh, you know, we had an experience. And um, he said, they went to have a conference in a church in um, a country whose name begins with S. You know, I don't want to really mention the country so that, you know. A country whose name, you can think of any country you want. And all of them were there as a board. And there was this assistant pastor, just like how Pastor Kofi is assisting here, is working here. So the pastor, the, one of the people who was a board member, went to see him, spoke to him, and asked him, How much are they giving you here? I want to make you an offer. Of so much more. And the guy believed it. I don't want to say he was a fool, but that's what occurs to me. But I, 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 yes. He believed it. And the guy took the offer. So that's why I ask you why are you here? Are you here because of money or how much you are being paid? Ah, you are not a good person. No, 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 no. You are not a good person, honestly. If money is what is moving you. The love of money is the root of all evil. Believe it or not. There, there's no bad thing that is happening in your life that doesn't have man. The love of money as a root of it. There's nothing bad in your life that's happening that doesn't have money as a root somewhere. Yeah. You won't believe it, but as the years go by, you'll see that it's true. Yeah. You'll see that it's true. The guy took it. The guy took it. One time I was watching a TBN. I think it was TBN or, you know, one of Daystar, TBN, some, and there was this worship leader. I don't want to sing the song that he sang because everybody will know the song. He was famous for that song and other songs. And he, he described how, you know, he was also in a country whose name begins with an S. Hey, this country. Hmm. And somebody came from a country whose name begins with A. <laughs> and told this guy, we, we love your worship, man. We love your, we love your, are you a worship leader? Are you, are you guys, ah, I don't know, yeah. So think about what I'm saying. We love your worship. We like the way, you know, you sing this, that, it's so beautiful. Why don't you come? And he said, he said they offered him one, two, three, four. He left his country, which begins with S, and went to the country whose name begins with A. And Every, he lost everything. He lost his position. He lost his place. He lost his importance. We never heard of him again. I won't sing his song. Several songs. Beautiful. I know you want me to sing, but I won't sing. <laughs> this is the offer of the enemy to take you out of your place and to introduce into you a spirit of independence, a spiritual independiente. Yeah. You are forcing me to speak Spanish. Yeah. 
Yes. So we have the corrupted nature of man that is constantly being provoked. Come on, be your own man. Jude verse 20, is it there? These be they which separate themselves. These are they, they separate themselves not having the spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. That is the sign that you are not following the spirit. Is the verse coming? Jude, the book of Jude. 19, yeah, 19, Jude 19. Yeah. These are they who separate themselves. Hey man, you belonged in that church. There's somebody here, you have 20 members, 30 members. You belong with someone else, helping him. But because this thing came to you, the seed of the serpent, come on. Come out, come out, be your own man, be a great whatever. God has called you, you are whatever. Listen. Are you listening? Is everybody listening? I, I beg you to listen to me. Listen very carefully. I'm about to say something, don't forget it. Not everybody is a Paul. There are many Timothys and Titus's, but not everybody is a Paul. Not everybody is an apostle. No one told Paul what to do, but Paul told Timothy what to do. And many pastors are Timothys. You actually need to be told what to do and to carry on in the ministry. But when you have somebody who is a Titus or a Timothy and says, oh yeah, I'm my own man. God has said, I have my own message. And you fall flat on your face. Yes, that's the reason for the struggling ministries, struggling churches. Many times, things don't grow. But if you were to stay in your place and assist and help, all right, not for money, but for love and for the understanding that we are building a family. You know, I pastor a church. I've been pastoring the same church since I was 25 years old. I'm in the same group. 25 years old. And I'm 60 years old now. Whether you believe it or not. Do I look 60? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 25 plus. All right. <laughs> you, you can pastor people as, like, just as a church. Or you can pastor them as a family. Or as an army. Or as an organization, as an employment, employing organization. Our church is more of a family. Yes. The people stay as a family. And what did Jesus say? I hope you can help me find that scripture. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? When they came to Jesus and they said, your mom is outside. Why don't you stop what you're doing and go? Your mom is outside. Your mother is outside. Okay. Your mother and your sisters are outside. They want to see you. And Jesus said, who is my mother or my brethren? Who are they? Look at it. Next verse. Next verse. And he looked around them and said, behold, my, 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 my mother and my brethren. These, these guys who are with me, these have become my family. This is my mother. This is my brethren. This is it. And that's what it will become. That's what it will become. The blood of Jesus is greater and thicker than any other Family. And because people don't understand this, that is why many ministries in America are finished. Because it was just based on the family. Yeah. It was just based on the biological family. And many times, the biological family, sometimes it's not big enough. Because we don't practice polygamy, we don't have enough children. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Gideon had 72 children. I mean, with that, you can have some, some of them being called to be pastors. Yes. But where you have only two children. Yes, maybe, maybe they're not called. So, in America... You have all this, it's me, my family, my wife, my wife and I, 
and my son, and my child, my daughter, my whatever. And that's all. So the ministries cannot, cannot continue into this realm. Look at it again. Put the scripture. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my mother? Who is my brethren? Who is my, who are my brethren? Peter was not related to Jesus. Peter was not a, Peter is not a cousin of Jesus. Did, have you heard of Jesus being a, Peter is a cousin. A, Peter was connected. I hear James was his brother, but he didn't put James in charge. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. oh are you surprised? James was James is his brother. He didn't put James in charge. It's Peter. James and John. Yeah. Peter. So as you are thinking your ministries it's just a family business. It's an independent something. No. There's, there's another way to do it. Think about it. I'm introducing to you. If you've never heard of it, I'm showing you something. And you can build a faithful family. And you can build against the anti-satanic corruption that is in the human race. The, 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 the desire to be on your own. To be your own man. To, to stand alone, to separate yourself, to be apostle Paul when you are not a Paul, to be something God hasn't ever intended you to be. And how we fall on our faces flat. Because God has always intended to build a, a bigger family than your biological family. How many are there in your family? How many are you? How many are you? What about if you didn't have a son? Oh, but you have a son-in-law. Okay. <laughs> uh, many ministries are struggling because they only understand and know independence. Stand on your own. Turn to Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Verse 6. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For He is our God. Verse 7. And we are the people of His pasture, the sheep. Of his hand, just the sheep of his hand. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture. We are the sheep of his hand. Listen, if there was ever any animal huh, that was dependent on human beings, dependent you are talking about sheep and jesus calls us the bible calls us sheep we are the sheep of his hand so that is what god sees you as amen, amen. he sees you as a sheep and beginning from today you must see yourself as a sheep and not as a snake. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. All right. Now, Jesus said, you generation of vipers. So he called some people snakes. Except you. Amen. You'll never be a snake. Now, what's the difference between a snake and a sheep? Independence. Have you ever seen a man with 20 sheep following him? Have you seen that before in a field? Isn't it? 17 sheep, 15 sheep all around him. He's moving. They're also moving. Have you seen a man in a field? With 17 snakes all around him. The snakes are happy. The snakes are flowing. 
The snakes are moving along. And the snakes are saying, I'm with you forever. The snake is saying, I depend on you. I like you. I want to be with you. I'll stay with you. No, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. Matthew 12 and verse 24 says that you are vipers. It talks about vipers. That we, we cannot be vipers. Amen. Scripture, scripture. Amen. You generation of vipers. How can you escape the wrath of God? Let us not be snakes, but let us be sheep. So I want to rebuke the snake nature. How many realize you have a bit of the snake nature? Brother. Huh? You are, a sheep. You are fully a sheep, right? No snake nature in you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pray about it, though. Pray about it. <laughs> Pray about it. Yeah. You see, if you, if you joke with what I'm saying, if you take it lightly, you'll be shocked that you become a snake. Yes. Because it just comes. It just comes. I want to be, I want, I want to be away. Couples, they marry and then they just, they, just, they just want to move apart. Yes, they just want to move apart. Wives easily don't want to submit. It's a democracy. Let's agree. You do this, I do this. It's an agreement. Yes. We tend to separate and to move apart. And that's how come churches cannot grow and cannot develop. All right? People mocked me when I started preaching about these things. Oh, yeah. They, preach, they, they laugh. They said, said, loyalty is not something you preach about. It's something that you command by the way you live. I said, wow. Loyalty is not something you have to, you have to teach or to preach about. It's something that comes naturally. It, that is the exact opposite. It rather doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come naturally to stay around. It comes naturally to want to leave and to set up your own thing and to move away and to move on. That is it. So you have to learn about faithfulness and believe that loyalty is a good subject. Look at it. Proverbs 20 verse 28 ERV version. Notice. Beautiful. A king who is loyal and true will keep his power. That's what I was sharing about Billy Graham. But look, look at the second part. It says, loyalty will keep his kingdom strong. It makes a strong church. Amen. And people are planted. Almost 99, between 99% of all my relationships are still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, it is in my mind that I know you and I will know you to, till I die. And you also know me till I die. Or till you die. Don't think I'll die before you. Also think that you can also die before. Why do you think I may die before you? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. The people that assisted me, the people that have been with me at the beginning, every, all the people are the same. Yeah. I work with different, different groups of people. But the mind and the understanding is that it is a family. A family that Jesus has created. And you don't change your family. You don't change your family. My family is Hayward Mills and I'm, I'm, I'm in it. Whatever we have, <laughs> we are there. Amen. Now, that is the blessing of the Lord. Amen. And if you don't believe in the message of faithfulness and you don't teach it, I tell you, snakes are going to crawl out of the ground. 
and the whole church is going to be surrounded more and more with wicked people and people who hate rather than people who love. Yeah. I remember when Benny Hinn was in Orlando. There was a time when he would come to church and there would be people outside the church with plaques. We hate you. Go away. Go away from Orlando. We hate you. This and that. Hatred. And you'll be shocked that it will be the very people that you have loved and cared for. Yeah. You know, one time, there was a civil war in Spain. And uh, there was a general who was going to take the Madrid. It was actually Madrid. He was actually going to take over Madrid. So he was interviewed by journalists as to how he was going to take the city. He said, oh, I have four columns outside and one column inside. The city was surrounded. He said, I have four columns outside and one column inside. Like, I have one column of disloyal people, people who are in the city, who the people of Madrid think are part of them. But they are actually my people. <laughs> and I have four, four groups outside. And he said, I'm going to use the inside one more. Yeah. So they started to make adverts and uh, publish that. If, don't trust anybody in the city. Don't even trust your girlfriend. They would make posters. Don't trust. Because they are around. The people, the fifth column, they are in, in the system. And you see, if anything is going to pull down the ministry, it's going to be the fifth column. The people inside who don't really belong and don't want to belong. Hmm. So, my prayer for you is that you will not become one of the monsters. Jesus said something. He said, have I not preached to you and one of you is a devil? I have a book here called, One of You is a Devil. No, these are the words of Jesus Christ. He was talking to his 12 disciples. He said, one of you pastors is a devil. Twelve of you, one of you is a devil. I mean, that's serious. What does it mean to have a devil in your midst? It's, he's the person who can unravel you and unravel the whole ministry. But he's inside. I wish I could give you, there's a, there's a theory called Trom Rombosos theory. Or thrombosis theory describes wicked people. It's a, there is a way you can see from their face that they are wicked people. Yes, from the face. I'll, I'll show you after church. I don't have internet. I'll, I'll show you. It's a thrombosis theory. It's a, from the way the eyes are and the cheekbones and so on, you can see that this man is a bad man. And those are the people that are used in movies as bad people. And, and, mo and a lot of criminals have those features. Oh, yes. Thromboso or rhombosos theory. <laughs> Check your neighbor whether the thrombosis theory is working on him. <laughs> That's how to see orangus and disloyal people. Hey! You can see from their eyes. <laughs> but if you don't have that theory, you have to read the book. Yeah. May you never be a devil. Oh. How could you do that to Jesus? Huh? You know, Jesus had great tolerance for bad people. When he met the woman of Samaria, he was very nice to her. Invited her, she became the first evangelist. When he met the woman who committed adultery and they found her, he was very nice to her. He said, don't, don't do it anymore. But when it came to Judas, he said it would have been better that you were not born. It would have been better that you were not born. I wish you had not been born. No, that's serious. May there never be anybody in this congregation who will fulfill such a role. Yes. When I see people who lose their babies like a miscarriage, I always encourage them. I said, don't worry. Maybe this was Judas who was coming and then it's better that he's not born. It's better. Yes. 
don't be sad it's judas oh yes and they are always encouraged that maybe this blood is judas going away by the power of god oh yes that's what it means that it would have been better that you were not born than you would become a judas and look at how somebody has loved you and it's the people you do the most for hey people can tell you stories you've loved them you've cared for them you've helped them People even accuse you of being partial and liking them specially. And they can turn around and insult you and accuse you. So you must be careful that you, you, you don't become a devil. So this is the things that create this independent spirit in us. If you don't preach about it, people are going to be ignorant. I have a book for those who are, those who are ignorant. I have a book for each group. Yes, I have a book for each group. Yes. Those who are ignorant. You see evangelist Shuttlesworth ministering and you think it's that easy. You see, your ignorance is manifested all the time. And you think it is just something that just happens. Try it and see. You try it and see and you find out that it's not as simple as all that. And you will learn to respect and to honor. So you see, you may be driving around with him. Maybe he may be walking with you casually. And you may think, oh, you know, it's just this nothing. You know, we just open the Bible. We just talk and we say this and we say that and this and that. And it's not like that. <laughs> Yes. Yes. The other day I was on a plane, you know, and the pilots I should come. So I, I was sitting with them in the cockpit. And as they were going, you know, you know, when, when you are stupid, <laughs> right, you can have all sorts of ideas. Because it's like the, the guy, it, it was like they're doing nothing. I said, but I can do this too. <laughs> just sit there and you just I mean, you press this one, press this one, and then you are landing. Hey! So, you see someone having a crusade. You see someone building a church. You see someone owning a building. You see someone raising funds. You see someone giving offerings. Doing things. And you think, oh, but this is that. This is nothing. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And so, there's a lot of ignorance you know, and you look at Eve, I mean, she was fooled to the nonsense degree. She was really fooled. That is why she took that step. Yeah, she was fooled. I remember one lady, uh, she said, I'm leaving my husband. Hey! hey. Uh, husband begged her. She, he was a pastor of a big church. Husband begged her. Please don't do that. I've seen it a number of times in my short experience. She said, no, I'm leaving. Then you know what? She, she felt, she said, when I leave, this church is finished. Yeah, the church is finished, I know. So she asked the husband to pay the divorce money. She said, pay all these millions. Pay before we make the announcement. Hey. So, yeah, to be sure that she gets the money and then she's out. So, she was paid. And then the announcement was made in the church. Huge church. Yeah. But the church didn't go away. Yes, the church didn't go away. Yes, ignorance. Yeah. So, she took the money. This was in a country whose name begins with an S. Uh, this country, I tell you. <laughs> she took the money and then left and went to a country whose name begins with an A. Hey. <laughs> Algeria. <laughs> Algeria. I hear it's Algeria. Pastor Jonathan says Algeria, so I think so. <laughs> 
and in that country, her money got finished. Oh, yes. Her money got finished. You see, stupid. Ignorant. Yeah. Now, you know what? The pastor, he told me himself. He said, now I decided to send money to look after her. So he sent money behind. She didn't even, she didn't even know. She would send money behind to look at. Crazy. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, please don't go Wazimu, please. Don't go Wazimu, please. I remember there was this guy who was assisting Bonke. He was an African guy. Bonke would preach and he would pray for miracles. Yeah. And one day the guy decided to, it's in Bonke's uh, biography. The guy said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Where is the book? Those who are ignorant. And he said, he said, when I leave, when I leave, Bonke is finished. Yeah. I want to say to anyone, eh, you cannot finish anybody in this world. You cannot finish anybody in this world. Yes. You cannot finish anybody in this world. You cannot finish any pastor, finish any man of God, finish any church, finish any calling by going anywhere or doing anything. Yes. You cannot and you will not. You are ignorant. That is why you are saying what you are saying. It was now that Bonke was going to soar like an eagle. This was right at the beginning of his ministry. He said, when I leave, Bonke is finished. Bonke is finished. You should have seen Bonke at the end of his life. Way 40 years after that incident. Going higher and higher and higher and higher. So stop thinking. If you are here, you are worshiping. When we go, the worship is going to fall flat. When I, when I leave the keyboard, no one will be able to play the keyboard. When I do this, no one is going to be able to do that. When I leave the church, there will be no financing in this church anymore. When I leave, the income is going to finish. When I, I mean, where did you learn these Wazimu ideas from? <laughs> Nobody can finish you. Oh, yes. Nobody can finish you. Nobody can finish you. We've had people all through the years trying to finish things. You are finishing nothing. You are finishing nothing. Oh, yeah. You are finishing yourself. Yes. So if you don't preach about, I'm saying that, if you don't preach and teach about it, people will become, number one, they'll become devils. Hmm. Number two, they'll be ignorant. Number three, they be proud. And this is a book for those ones, those who are proud. There's a book for each group. Proud people. Those who are proud. Derek Prince says the first sin in the universe was not Adam and Eve. It was Lucifer. It was pride. That's the first sin. Pride. Big. Strong. Nobody can talk to you. When a pastor is preaching, you don't say amen anymore. You just... You don't write notes anymore. I mean, you know what he's saying. You know what, you know what he was going to say. You know what he will say tomorrow. You know what he will say next year. I mean, you know everything. Somebody's got to be Wazimu. Proud. Those who are proud. Watch out for those. You can't teach them anything anymore. Yes. You see, you, the biggest sign of your pride is when no one can correct you or teach you or tell you anything. I don't, one guy said, I don't want to be the subject of any more meetings. That's what he said. I said, I don't want to be the subject of any more meetings. I visited one guy in his house. I said, listen, we are Christians. There should be peace and harmony between Christians. He said, walk out of my house. He walked me out of his house. He said, yeah. He, and and the last, his last words were, I don't need you and you don't need me. I said, wow. I don't need you and you don't need me. There's nothing like that. The Bible says, they without us are not made perfect. Please put that scripture up, Hebrews. 
They without us are not made perfect. You need me and I need you. You will always need me and I will always need you to be perfect. Amen. Tell somebody standing by, look, I need you. I think I need you from today. I, I want you to be in my life. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and verse 40. Underline it. That they without us should not be made perfect. Can I have an amen? amen. Now, are you still around? Yes. Are you sure you are still here? Yes. If you don't teach about faithfulness and drive out that independent spirit, people will just accuse you. And I have a book for them to those who accuse you. Please put the books up. When I announce the book, please put it up. Those who accuse you. There's no way to be in ministry without a lot of accusations. You need to understand it. In Revelation chapter 12, the devil is called the accuser. Accuser. And accusation weakens you. And you must be careful that you do not become an accuser. Why accuse me? You're accusing me. It's not going to change me. It's not going to make me better. Accusations don't make people better. Accusations are a work of the devil. God himself doesn't accuse us. It's the devil who accuses. How many want a new anointing in this church and in your ministry? If you want a strong grace in your church, you must silence accusations. Yes. There are people who accuse me. I don't waste my time to read. To read or to listen. Because I don't want to hear. Because they want me to hear and I don't want to hear. The more you listen to accusations, it's like you are listening to the voice of Satan. Satan is speaking. It's like if he could get a voice and speak to you, he would spew out his hatred and dislike for you. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 10, it says the accuser is cast down. Don't allow accusers to stay around. Amen. Throw them out. Throw them where? Out. Some of you are wiser than God. Introduce yourself, Mr. Wise Man. I think there's somebody sitting next to you who's wiser than God. Proverbs 2 verse 10. It says, I heard a loud voice saying, now is come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. Why? Because the accuser, the accuser, the one who accuses you about money, accuses you about this, accuses you about that, accuses you about everything you can imagine. How many have been accused before? Once you are in the ministry, you are going to be accused. Those who accuse you. And you must deal with them. You must silence them. And you must drive them out of your life. Because if you don't take care, it will weaken you. Oh, yes. One day a pastor was laying hands on people after it was, he had a convention. He, he was laying hands on many people. When he got back home, his wife said to him, listen, I want to have a discussion with you. He said, what is it? He said, she said, you know, you were laying hands on everybody. But you remember the lady in the red dress? When you got to that lady, your laying hands was longer than other laying on of hands. <laughs> and it was also more intense, like you were really, you were really, really ministering. <laughs> hey! You know, it became an argument. And the pastor said, I did not lay hands longer. So they had to even get the video of the service and put it on and analyze two minutes, one second, one second, one second. Hey. hey. So the next day, he went back and the same lady, this time she was wearing blue. 
she also came forward again. So as he was laying hands, laying hands, then he opened her and he saw the lady was there. So this time when he got to her, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus. Then he continued very fast and just went very quickly. Yeah. You know, the strength to lay hands was gone. Yes. The strength from an accusation. From the same work that you are doing. Accusing of something. Sometimes you accuse your husband of being interested in someone. That's when he starts to notice the person. He has never seen that person before. So learn about accusation. Accusations don't change things. Accusation spoils things. Because it's, the we- it's Satan's weapon. Overcome evil with good, not with evil. You don't overcome evil with another evil. Mm. I think I'm going to Tanzania now because uh, my time is up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Turn with me to Isaiah. I want to just show you something. Quick. This just by the way. Are you still around? Yeah. Now, Isaiah 58, let's look at verse 8. American Bible, please, if you don't mind. The American Bible, NESB. Isaiah 58, verse 8. Look at this. He's talking about fasting, but he says something. He says, Then your light. Maybe we should read from verse 7 because we are reading the Bible. Is it not to divide? He's talking about the fast. When you see the naked to cover him, verse 8. Verse 8. Then your light will break out like the dawn. How many want your light to break out? How many want things to change? I believe things are changing. And your righteousness will go before you. Are you listening? And the glory of the Lord will be your rare God. Beautiful. Now, verse 9. Then you will call. And the Lord will answer. How many want the prayers of the saints to be answered? Everybody, don't forget Isaiah 58 and verse 9. It says, you will cry and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst. And what? The pointing of the finger. The accusing finger. If you take that finger out and the speaking of wickedness. Then what is going to happen? Your light is going to come. All right? Then your light, listen, your light will arise in darkness. So many of us, our light is now going to shine brighter if you can get rid of the accusers. The accusers. Yes. And your gloom will become like midday. Wow. Verse 11. All right? And the Lord will continually guide you. So you see, you don't hear the guidance of God because you are just feel accusing. All those of you who accuse Benny Hinn of whatever. How, do, how will you ever receive the, the light of God out of your obscurity? How you accuse God's servants? You accuse evangelist Shuttlesworth. How will light, your, your light will never rise in obscurity. It never will bring you out of obscurity. Yeah. Look at verse look at verse verse 8 again. Then your light will rise break out like the dawn. Your recovery will speedily bring forth and your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rare guard. When you do what? Verse 9. Then you will call, you start having answers. And the Lord will answer. I learned this verse from Rick Joyner. I don't mind telling you where I learned things from. I learned this from him. He said, then you will cry. And he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst. And the pointing of the finger. So many of you point your finger. Look at this. This is a mistake. This is a sin. This is wrong. This is wrong. That is not good. This is wrong. What has it led to? 
It's unrighteous judgment and self-righteousness and pointing of fingers. Come on, man. It has led to nothing. It does not bring any grace to the church at all. It does not bring grace to your life. Stop accusing. Stop finding faults. Stop finding things wrong with other pastors and churches. Why don't you start concentrating on something wonderful? I, I, I hear Billy Graham doesn't speak in tongues. I don't know if he's speaking in tongues. But I have never thought about it. I have never found anything wrong. Whether you are Baptist, Catholic, whatever. To me, I can only see something good. My eyes are trained on good things. I want to see something good and be blessed. I don't care. Mr. Righteous Man. Tell your neighbor, I hear you are a very righteous person. I hear you are like this type of righteous guy finding fault with all kinds of things. Hey. Watch out. Watch out, those of you who are specially righteous. Mr. Good Good. Oh, we don't find his teaching doctrinally sound. Why did you even come here? Why did you even come here? Why do you bother? Why do you bother? What, what is wrong with you? In Matthew 25, the guy with the uh, five talents, the guy who had one talent and didn't bring forth any fruit, his, his problem was fault fine. He says, I know thou art a hard man. He, he, you, you immediately see faults. Anybody who comes here, you see faults in Pastor uh, Jonathan or his wife or anything that we are doing here. I don't even know why you are here. We don't even need you here. We don't even want you to be here. We want you to leave. We want to sign your exit. We want to exit you and sign you out. Proverbs 22 verse 10. Look at Proverbs 22 verse 10. Proverbs 22 verse 10. We are signing you out. Cast out the scorner. Cast out the scorner. You don't counsel scorners. You cast them out. You say you walk out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Go to another church. And contention shall go out. No, notice it. Some of you have kept corners in your church and it has weakened you. Their presence weakens you. Cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Take him out. You know, many years ago when I started preaching, hey, no one supported me. And I felt God had called me and I, I took the bold decision. I said, I'm going to start a church. Hey. People started to criticize me. You know, the problem they had, they had a problem with my preaching. First of all, the problem they had was that they were not sure whether I was called. Because I was a medical student. So what is a medical student doing saying he's starting a church? Then the second problem they had was that I, I used to walk around when I preached, like now I'm walking around. <laughs> and then he walks up and down. And then the third problem they had was I was drinking water when I was preaching. It was a big problem. It was a big problem. I mean, so many criticisms. You know, I tell you, I was a new pastor with my very, this was my first sermons ever in, the, in this world. Yeah. And I tell you, on Saturday, I started to get a running stomach on Saturdays for fear. Because the guys were just criticized. They were talking about me. So when I come to church, especially they used to sit on the uh, second row. You know. And people want to get out of the second row now. But they used to sit over there like that. And it's like they would talk about me. Wow. My, hand, my hands used to shake. The microphone was shaking like this. And my mouth would get dry. Wow. wow. And I'd be so scared. Uh -huh. If I didn't have my notes, I couldn't preach. 
One day I came to church, I left my notes at home. I had to go rush back. I thought I was more than uh, Formula One driving all the way to get my notes and come back. Because these guys were all staring at me looking. Few members, but still very powerful in their criticism and accusations. Watch out those of you with your small churches and you see the people sitting there with two eyes looking at you. Questioning the calling, questioning the preaching, questioning what you are saying. And one day, I had a dream. In the dream, I was a boxer. I was wearing blue shorts. My opponent was wearing red shorts. Or the other way around. And we started sparring, boxing. I think it was 11 rounds. Yes, I went for 11 rounds. And suddenly, I got out of the dream. And uh, I I was on the floor. Do you know who the other boxer was? How many want to know? I should go to Tanzania to tell the people who was the other boxer. Uh The other boxer was a girl who used to sing before I preached. Yeah. And the Lord showed me, said, these people are criticizing you. Yeah. They're discussing you, analyzing you, talking about you. So I called their leader. I said, brother, come to my room for a meeting. So they came for a meeting. I said, everybody sit on the floor. And I had my verse very strong. Proverbs 22 verse 10. Cast out the scorner. Yeah. I said, brother, from today, you are out of this church. What? I said, yes, what? You are out. Go out of this. He said, oh, I don't need to leave. I can be around. I can help with the uh, ushering and I can help. I said, no, 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 no. I don't want you. The Bible said, cast out this corner and strife shall go out. And I cast him out. He went out. That singer went out and a whole lot of them, they all went. And from that day till today, the same people that have been with me are the same people that have been with me all these 35 years of ministry. Yeah. Yeah. It's better to have fewer loyal people than a whole lot of questioning, accusing, suspicious people. So, if you don't teach on loyalty and so on, you're going to have that. That's my book, Loyalty and Disloyalty. Satan doesn't like it, and a lot of his agents also don't like this book. (laughs) Then, when you don't teach about loyalty and faithfulness, you have dangerous sons. What is a dangerous son? A dangerous son is Absalom. Do you remember Absalom? Absalom was a son to King David. King David was attacked by his own father. He was attacked by his own son. May you never attack your father and somebody who has been good to you in the ministry. All the Bible students, stand up. Bible students here, stand up. Ah, Look at all of you. May you never, never, did you hear what I said? Never attack your father. Evangelist has set up a Bible school, giving you an opportunity to learn something has organized me to come here and preach to you. Look at, I'm talking to you. You are learning. You know, there are people that have been in this church and they left. You should listen to some of the nonsense that they say. I don't know anyone, but I know they exist. I know they exist. Because this is my work. Yeah. So you have to be careful, all of you. Because David was happy when Absalom was born. He was holding him. Hoo, 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 hoo. He, you know, like when a new baby. Hoo, 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 Absalom. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Hey. Yeah. And Absalom grew up. When Absalom was a big man, he took up arms to attack his own father. And that is a curse. So the great blessing, you see, there's nothing like ministry without a father. You may not like to hear that, but there's nothing. First Corinthians 4.15 says that you may have 
many teachers, 10,000 teachers, but you don't have many fathers. Father, father. A father is not an old man. A father is someone who causes you to exist. You wouldn't exist if Pastor Jonathan Shuttlesworth have not made this school. True or not true? True. You wouldn't exist. Don't chew gum in church, please. Amen. Can I say that in America? Yeah. Okay. Amen. All right. Listen. Never grow up out of this place and become a bad person to this church. There are people like that. And if this church lasts long, there's going to be Absaloms. There's going to be people who will come and say, yeah, you know, we have information. We know this. We've worked at the highest level. Or we know this. And there's this going on. And there's that. And they'll come with proverbs. And they'll say, you know, when a crocodile comes from under, <laughs> under the pond and tells you that there's a snake there, you have to believe him. Do you understand? I'll say it again. When a crocodile comes from under the water, the pond, and tells you that there is a snake under, you got to believe him because he's from there. He's from under the black water. He knows what is there. And they use such proverbs. And they say things like, you know, oh, we know because we've worked there. You know, we know this and we know that. And, you know, there's this going on. And, you know, it's not everything I can say. You know, just pray about it. You know, why don't you pray and let's, 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 let's commit it to God. Let's, let's commit all things to the Lord. Hey, do you have such things in America? Yes. I thought it was only outside. Oh, America is the headquarters of all these things. <laughs> Absalom. How can you attack your own father? Yeah. How can you attack your own father? I mean, that's, that's le- high level. The one who nurtured you, the one who helped you, the one who talked to you, talked to you, uh, the one whose genes you carry. You look like him, you talk like him. You see, this this church, the, the spiritual DNA of this church is a spiritual DNA. It's a spiritual thing. Look at us today. Today is what? What is today? Thursday. It's Thursday. We are in the morning. Look at this. Is Amer- we are in America. We are talking about God and the ministry. Yeah, we are all here. We are happy to be here. We've been talking for some time. This is not a 30, 33 minute sermon. No. It's something is happening. You grow up. You are blessed to be here and be grateful. Be careful when you are dealing with people that have caused you to exist. Be careful. You can bring yourself to the end. If you are a Christian, there's a basic verse you must understand. Honor thy father and thy mother that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long upon the earth. People don't honor. We have come from Africa and we are honoring the fathers. You hear me mentioning Kenneth Hagin's name. Today, many pastors in America will not mention, they won't even mention somebody's name. They say, oh man, I mean, I'm my own man. God called me. God spoke to me in the middle of the night. He said, my son, my son, I send you to the nations of the world. Hey. I mean, you never acknowledge anybody. You never mention anybody's name. You never honor anybody. How, how will you ever be honored? How will you ever be honored? How will you ever be honored? Some of you, you have quarreled with the pastor who trained you and, and helped you. That's why you are nothing. That's why you, I'm telling you why you are nothing. Oh yes, you've amounted to a hill of beans. You are nothing in God. You are nothing in the ministry. Because you are breaking fundamental. You are breaking the third of the ten commandments. You are breaking it. You are breaking it. And you are trying to serve God. And you are trying to break the commandments and serve God. And you can't do that. You know, Pastor Jonathan is a father to you. He's not an employer. He's not an employer. Don't think in that way. I don't, I don't like that. Don't think of money. Don't think of job. Think of family. Think of how God thinks. Who is my mother? Who is my sister? Who is my brother? Who is my family? That's why, that, that, that's why we, we have come from outside and we see afar. 
and we are honoring Catherine Coleman. Whilst you despise Catherine Coleman. Huh? I don't know if you know the kind of miracle that Catherine Coleman was holding. <laughs> I have a book. I don't know if it still exists. It's written by a doctor with x-rays and scans and everything. The pictures are in the book. Do you know that book? I had that book. I, ha- I would have to find, find it. It had the scans, the x-rays, miracles of healing. Where is that anointing? Where is the healing? Where is the miracle? Where is the crusades? Where are the large churches? What you fight will never come near you. What you attack, it will run away from you. What you honor, it will come to you. Oh, yes. You have attacked big anointings and big powers. <laughs> and and it despise them and you speak funny about people who God is using. How will ever God use you? You are finished. You are finished in the ministry. Those of you in the music ministry, start to think of yourself as children. Yes. Don't, don't think of yourself as employees. Yeah. Don't think of yourself as people. We are here to help. You know, we, we've come to bring our gift. <laughs> you know what a beard is? You know what a beard is? A beard is something that is part of the body, but when we remove it, the body moves on normally. In fact, you even look nicer. You will look nicer without your beard, I'm telling you. Some of you who think you are employees here, the church will even be nicer without you. Oh yes, the day you are gone, the church will be better. Cast out the scorner and strife shall see. Try it and see. Try it and see. So those of you, I wrote a book for them, those who are dangerous sons. A dangerous son is a son who can rise up and attack his own father. I've seen a lot of that. Yeah. Not a lot, but I've seen some. I mean, there are some people who are determined to fulfill what is in the book. As if they read it and said, let, let, me, let me fulfill page 20. <laughs> Are you still around or you are leaving? Uh-huh. <laughs> then we have those who are offended. Yeah, those who are offended. You are hurt. You can't, listen, you cannot stay in a church without being offended about something. The Bible says in Leviticus that a priest should not have boils. What is a boil? A boil is a cut which didn't heal. Then it swells up and becomes like a swelling. Because it's not healing. And it's it's getting something else. Many of us are offended. To be a minister, you must not have boil. You must know how to get a sweet spirit and overcome the hurts and the pains that come in the ministry. Yes, you cannot. In my book on the steps to the anointing, steps to the anointing, I talk about it. You can't have the anointing, maybe tonight, you can't have the anointing. You can't have the anointing with heads. You need to have a free, sweet, sweet spirit. Yeah. You need to have, that's why you can't listen to certain things. You need to be free. You need to flow. You need to flow. You need to, you need, you need to just be able to move on. Yeah. Otherwise, you change. The Bible calls it a root of bitterness. It poisons and defiles. It changes you in the ministry. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. Maybe I was preaching and I I came to you and I was waving my hand in your direction and people were looking at you and it was on the video. Yes, fine. They put it up on the screen. Don't be offended. Don't be hurt. Don't be hurt. Because a church, and if you don't preach about faithfulness, you're going to lose almost everybody from offense. Yeah. I thought you'd pay me more than 2000 I thought I would earn, you know, whatever, but you're just giving me $300. Wow. 
I thought I would get this. I thought this. I thought, I thought you would take me along. One time I, I, we were traveling and there was a guy who thought he would be asked to preach when pastor is away. And he wasn't asked to preach. And somebody else was asked to preach. Hey, the guy was, I mean, he went ballistic. He went ballistic. I mean, he left the ministry over that. Yeah. He left the ministry over, over not being made to preach when pastor was not there. He came back many years later and said, you realize that he went to Wazimu and then he's, he's healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those who are offended. Have you been hurt before since you joined the church? How many Bible students have been hurt before? Raise your hand. Oh, raise your hand properly. Look at everybody, look at them. Hey, so if you are hurt like this in the school, how much more in real ministry? So, get over it. Get over it. Get over it. Get over it. Amen. And then we have those who forget. If you don't teach Hebrews 6 verse 10. Hebrews 6 verse 10. It says that God is not unrighteous to forget. All right? So this is, look at the book on the screen, Those Who Forget. It's a very good book. Read it. It will bless you. God is giving you the anointing of wisdom. Without this, the human nature is going to forget. It's going to become a dangerous son. It's going to become an Absalom. It's going to be offended. All these things will just happen naturally. I mean, it, it, you don't have to... You don't have to prime yourself. It will just happen. That's how it is to work with human beings. You know, many years ago, my mother, my dear mom, I, I was asking her to do some work to help in the church. And she said, no problem. But she said on one condition. My mother, my mother, who is 80-something years old, she said, I will do anything except it has to do with human beings. <laughs> She said if it has to do with paper, cabinets, computer, typewriter, I will do it. But if it has to do with human beings, no, 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 no. Because this is the human nature. Yes. People will forget how you've been nice to them. How you've been kind. I mean, Hebrews 6.10 says, God is not un." righteous to forget your work and labor of love. And you see, in a church like this, we can easily forget what our pastor does for us. Yes. You, there are many of you, you appreciate visitors when they come. You appreciate visiting minister. But the greatest visiting minister in this church is Pastor Jonathan Shuttlesworth. He's the greatest visiting minister here. He's the one that God has placed you and he is the one to be appreciated more than any, anybody who comes to walk around here. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't feel your clapping. It, you, you look like ambassadors. You look like diplomats who are, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 He is the he is the most important person here. Who is laboring? Look at the scripture. Your labor and work of love. He is only working is laboring day and night out of his love for God and for you. He's not looking for anything for, from you. He doesn't even need anything from you. But you see, people forget. Ah, people forget. And when it's time to appreciate and to honor, people don't appreciate and they don't honor, especially pastors. Oh, you have pastors, uh, oh, you know, broken heart. Yesterday I prayed for somebody, I, he's been in the ministry for years. I said, This man is broken hearted. Most older pastors are heartbroken. If he's older, I mean, you, you, you see, they, they, they have had so many experiences. And it's, it's almost like they, they, they don't even know what to do. Next. Yeah. 
you, you can even, they don't even want to trust people, to laugh, people, to help anybody. Because the people they've helped, they've loved, people have betrayed them. Yeah. Catherine Kuman, she was sued by her pianist. You know, I mean, the people that she loved, the singers that she, you know, when he was going to sing, she, 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 she would dress him up before, put on his suit, his tie, and you know, he, she, he, she was so proud of him. She was so proud of the pianist and all this. I mean, these guys took her up in the end of her life. It is something. No, 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 no. You see, we must not forget. And all these people, there will be nothing if it was not for the servant of the Lord. So I want you people to know that the greatest and most important person to ever honor in your midst, I'm telling you, is your own pastor who, uh, who is doing a labor and a work of love in your midst. Don't forget that. Now, did you know, did you know that honor is a seed? Did you know that honor is a seed? It's a seed you sow. Oh, yeah. You see, there are many people here, you are not honored because you don't honor. <laughs> you know, one time there was a, there's a pastor in Ghana, Bishop Duncan Williams. It was his birthday. What's that? Oh, sorry. Hmm. Why does he drink water when he's preaching? <laughs> because it's dry. <laughs> and uh, it was his birthday, so he had a little party in his house. So I went in the night, and we were leaving around midnight. And I said, bye, good night, we're going. He said, no, I'm, I'll take you to the car. So he came out of his house and he walked with me all the way to my car. I said, oh, there's no need to do that because he's a father. He was there. I, I attended his church. When we got to my car, he lifted up his hands like this. And he said, may you also be celebrated and honored. As you came to honor me and to celebrate me, may people celebrate you and honor you in the same way. Honor is a seed. You see, you never honor, you will never be honored. You never sow a seed in somebody's life. A seed will never be sown in your life. I'm telling you, it's supernatural. It will never even occur to somebody to honor you. Yeah? Some of you, you are without honor in your churches. Yeah, because your, your members have never seen you honoring somebody. They've never heard, you've not, you've not even mentioned anybody's name. Some of you, you've come to this conference because of your connection and your relationship with Pastor Jonathan. But you would never mention his name in your church. Or it's like, it's like, no, we preach, we don't mention it. We only mention the name of Jesus. Really? You only mention the name of Jesus. Where do you get all these things from? Like, I don't know, some type of special righteousness and yeah. some type of unrighteous judgment. You only mention, you only mention the name of Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Oh, we don't want to honor men. We want to stay with God. Wow. It sounds so super religious. Watch out for these special righteous people. Yes. Honor and you will be honored. Whatsoever. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Whatsoever. Whatsoever means whatsoever. Whatever. A man sows. Whatever it is that you sow, if it is honor, you will reap honor. Yes. Yes. Just as your church members don't know anybody and will never, your church members will never mention your name when they are even sharing or preaching. Because you never mention anybody's name. Yes. But Jesus, when he came, he always mentioned his father. He says, I do what I see my father doing. Yeah. So, beginning from today, I see honor coming to your life. I see faithfulness. I see faithfulness. I see a good spirit, a good attitude, a good spirit, a good faithful spirit coming into you, coming into the church. 
Be thou faithful unto death, not for four years, not for three years, not for just a season. Be thou faithful unto death. Amen and amen. amen. Those who honor you. I've got a book for that as well. Those who honor you. Yes. Oh, yes. Those who honor you. I suggest you read. Learn it. Teach it. Teach people to honor. You'll be shocked. Your whole ministry is going to change. Some visiting minister came to our church. He said he has never been honored as much as when he came to the church. He said so many people just honored him. He said he doesn't, he doesn't know that. Oh, yes. Those who leave you. There's another book, Those Who Leave You. It's another story. Maybe for another time. But I want to say to you, don't leave. Amen. A certain man had two sons. The younger of them, the foolish one, he said, I'm leaving. Yes. And when he left, he lost everything. Those who leave you. Yeah. When you leave your father's house, what do you expect? Some of you, you are leavers of your father's house. You didn't live well. Now you say you are doing ministry. Instead of saying, I will arise and I'll go back. And I'll say, I have sinned against heaven and against you. You don't want to say that. Because you don't want to admit that you are wrong. But today is a day of repentance also. And those who pretend. All these are behaviors we have. We have a lot of pretenders here. A lot of pretenders. Pretending is an evil thing that comes from Lucifer. Yeah. So I believe you are being healed today. Those who pretend. You see the eyes. That Romso's theory or whatever. Yeah. You can see the bad people from the, from the face. <laughs> but your face is good. Amen. Every standing, please. Every standing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Let's just pray. We pray. We continue in the evening. Father, thank you for your mighty power that is working so beautifully. Thank you for honor and faithfulness. Put your hand on your heart. Father, let every serpent seed that is in anyone, the seed of separation and independence, the seed of being a dangerous and ungrateful person, let that spirit, that evil, let it not be in us anymore. I pray for a good spirit, Lord, a faithful spirit. Your word says a faithful man. Who can find? I thank you. Everyone here is going back to their churches to find many faithful men. Many, many faithful men. Thank you for the building of mega churches. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. And everyone shouted, Amen. God bless you. Thank you.